Okay. That's why I intentionally said he sizes her up. Okay, so, get a time check here. We're you also got to remember that blacksmiths don't always don't have weapons so on the So you then finish going around the market and buying supplies. You mm -hmm. end up spending just about everything we have in our account to buy supplies. I deserved it. Yes, you do. We'll have to bring it back on a cart. Do you have a cart skill? Uh, I don't think no, you do. No fucking way. Okay. You can haul it. You're strong. So you have a choice of we can hire somebody to bring it there, or we can try to guide a cart through the streets back to the house. We being me and the girl? Yep. Yeah. Or you can just pull it yourself. <laughs> You're a strong bastard. <laughs> a Russian, if a Russian peasant woman can pull a plow, you can pull a cart. Well, girl, you're going to get a workout today. Both of us are. <laughs> Start hauling. Both of us. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You want to pull the cart yourself. I was teasing, man. <laughs> well, how much is it? You're talking about buying food for a lot of people. It'd be like loading up a couple of station wagons full of food. Okay. In, in modern terms. I was under the impression so this was going to like, cut. You can manipulate the cart without the skill. I'm just asking if you had the skill, the point of that's the skill would be used. No. Guiding the no cart without skill. the skill is just a simple agility. Just like driving a car would be. Mm -hmm. So let's just guide the cart then. The only thing you're really running is if you flood the roll, the cart tips over, you might lose some food. Ooh, I don't want to do that. We got two carts and have her pull one. The act, the uh... Okay. You want to divide the load up in half. I'll give you an extra plus two to your circumstance modifiers. You're not trying... I'll give you an extra plus two to your circumstance modifiers. You're not trying to do anything difficult other than get the cart from point A to point B. It's all Patty wants to do. Agility plus two. <coughs> so I would have even done it three quarters me and a quarter her. I mean, it didn't have to be half and half, but whatever. So basically what they're doing is they're basically walking in front of the donkey and having the donkey pull and they're just pulling the donkey. She has a row. Um... I think I do too. You're probably right in the buckboard. I was just thinking maybe they just walk in front of the donkey and have the donkey pull. I just pull on the donkey. That way they don't have to worry about trying to steer it. I thought it was going to be you buy her uh, an and you and you buy food and you go back home. But Welcome to a James That's game. okay. <laughs> uh, things I love. I actually got a... I actually got a dramatic on that. Right. So you don't bump anybody, you don't run anybody over, nobody tries to steal anything from the cart. Okay. You get it back. And the cart actually, the kitchen and service are in the back, so you actually pull down this narrow alley. And again, as these are carts meant for a city, they're not very wide. All right, they're meant to go down these narrow alleys. So even if the cart's only five feet wide, that's more than enough room to pile it all up and run it through there, but it does make it kind of sway from back to side. Come in the back and you start unloading. That probably takes you about, I'd say, two, two and a half hours. While they're occupied working, what are you two doing? Uh, we're going to start trying to clean the place up at least somewhat. Clean it up, maybe talk to some of the locals, see if we can find somebody that'd be willing to do the cooking and stuff. I mean, assuming and we're cleaning. hiring somebody for doing cooking and cleaning. And cleaning. Yeah, there's got to be a cook in there. Okay. Yeah. So you start yeah. looking around the locals for people to man the house. Mm -hmm. I need you to give me a... That's on you, because you're the local. Speech and charisma. <laughs> When we get to the actual persuading, and give me a streetwise and intelligence to know where to go. Uh, so street, streetwise and intelligence first? Yes. For local women, I would imagine the local market, because that's where they're shopping for daily supplies. And for men, because you'd be surprised at how many jobs back then were actually done by men and not by women, like cooking, <laughs> uh, you probably wanted to go to the tavern or the wine house Success. or the fountain. How easy would it be to find a mouse or a rat in this area? So, so, so Dude, success on the streetwise and in any given direction. Okay, cool. For the streetwise thing, for finding. For your, okay. Where you go. So, curse you. If we really want people, we can probably take some of the locals that were already pretty relaxed mm -hmm. and go with someone who doesn't look like they're occupied. Probably at this point, you're looking at someone's elderly grandmother, or maybe a uh, young girl that's trying to like get noticed one of the two okay all right and as you walk around the streets and start discreetly asking hey i now own this building blah 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 i need a charisma and uh speech roll to convince somebody to come work for you nice very nice you silver tongue devil <laughs> hey she rolled well and this is the thing she should be you know he should be good at is being charming he's good hey the next time we play Heroic. a role playing game could you be a guy and she could be a guy. Yeah. Girl. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just, I, I just doing this because I, I want to. I can't think of Ruth as a he. It's just, I have to keep I, I, changing I gears. I, I don't know if the power tools lately. 
Yeah. I'm doing the fan fiction with this character, and I just wanted to feel out the character and build a okay. personality you for got, her and everything. I got a heroic. You find yourselves enough people that you feel like are secure, are like untoward. A lot of more women. See, the task is not necessarily finding people. It's finding people you can trust not mm -hmm. to talk. Yeah, exactly. Or rip us off. Or rip us off. Or right? try to steal something. Or, you know, That's the rip off part. Yeah. <laughs> so, the whole top floor, the third floor, um, it has some apartments on it. But again, the apartments that are there are like, again, in interior waddle. It occurs to players they could clear out that entire interior walls mm -hmm. and have a vast secret open loft that's 70 by 60 feet. Good training room. Meeting room and other things too. So you've got yourselves a nice little building, and this is probably taking back the bulk of the day. Uh, I'd say probably around about the two or three o'clock hour in the afternoon. The players might want to sleep again because, being thieves, you guys are up at night. Yeah. I find time to give her lessons. Okay. And teach her to fight a little bit, so she'll be be able to help us in more ways. So she won't be helpless. Got it. On the roof, the Sumerians training the dancer how to fight. Yep. Well, uh, to use an axe? Hands on approach. I'm going to help her. It's a medium weapon. He's got the medium weapon skill. Mm. Okay. Bye, Kronk. The evening and the day pass. Not much else seems to really go not according to plan. Paraj and his men return at about 6 or 7 in the evening. Because, you know, they've been mourning and doing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, they basically inform you that they'll be grieving the rest of the day for their lost friends. They're not going to be able to do anything the rest of today. That's okay. fine. That's Matter of fact, take as long as you need. Unlike those backward Shemites, they don't mourn for seven days. They get it all out in one night. We got some wine. Terranians, in the elitists. We got some fresh mm -hmm. wine in the basement if you need to, you know, partake. Oh, thank you, our friends. And the Terranians basically right now are like all like their click during their thing and we're click is the other. It's going to take a while before there's actually some two-way trust there. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Especially after he... Bash your brains in one guy. <laughs> and <laughs> brain the other guy on my fist. So right, I'm going to say you have three servants. One of the servants comes up and she's a uh, older woman. She's like, there's a gentleman here from the temple, I think, to see you. Uh-oh. It's our boy. Ah, thank you. I will go out it's and Durley. see him. I will go out with you because I haven't met this person yet in person as a player. <laughs> <laughs> It might be Durlac. So you walk no, outside in the not. side alley. In the side alley without view of the street. In the side mm -hmm. alley, there's one of the silent ones. Okay. Okay, again, refresh me. Silent ones are the personal elite temple guard of the Temple of Zath. Oh, okay, good. So what does the bug and want? He bows to the party and he hands you a letter. Oh, okay. Again, they don't speak. Yeah, so take the letter. Alright, so what does the bug god want? The letter reads Greetings. I have heard that perhaps Bail Hattar is looking for men and might be a good way to get into the good graces of a group called the Merchant's Parlay. I would recommend you seek a contact within the coming week. And he doesn't sign his official name so he knows exactly who's sending you missions because if the letters yeah. were caught, okay. he's not going to be proved. It's just called, burn, it's called burn, the, burn the letters and call it a day. Yeah, if it's caught during transit. Ah, good point. Parchment doesn't burn very easily, by the way. We'll have to figure out. We'll have to use yeah, it. It's on papyri. Oh, it's on papyri? Okay, then that's not a problem then. So and there's no response expected. Right, or he's just giving, he's just sending okay. you information. You have to get really hot. Okay, oh, gotcha. So, yeah, yeah, Bail Hatar. He was the guy, the one of the trader guys that were at the that was at the place. Yep. So we would know the name. Mm -hmm. you know, I have that. He's a spice merchant. He's one of the few people who actually has access to coffee. Ah. Oh. And no one knows where he's getting it from. Oh okay. shit! We really have to make friends with this guy. <laughs> the reason why he says that is because in this time period, coffee is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, or mm. silver at least. Hmm. Depends. Ah. Depends. I mean, this this far north, gold. Gold. Yeah, good point. We're not in Stygia or Shem or in a place like that where it's closer to the source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and it's but... all overland getting here too. Yep. And that sucks. You know, I have those coded journals too that haven't been land travel is yet six either. to ten times more expensive. It's than only been like a few hours. We're picking up almost right after. So that's something that oh, actually this is like the day after. Person, huh? So I probably Everybody would go ahead and declare that. When my One character has free road, time, he's going to sit and try to crack the code in the journals. Just if so you made it, yeah. Okay. So, I actually couldn't hear her because there was so much crosstalk. Sorry. sorry. Remember, she soft her voice. I'm sorry. What, did I just agree to you something about journals? <laughs> in my character's free time, he will try to crack, to crack the code in the journals. Okay, so what we'll do is at the beginning of every game session, so, we'll make a code cracking roll. Yeah. Okay. 
So you've gotten this lead now, but maybe approaching Bail Hatar, who's apparently looking mm -hmm. for men. Do you want to go do that, or do you want to yeah, just see what yeah, happens? Yeah, we are having all the signs. Because that would actually be a great way to make money, mm -hmm. especially if he wants to send us on. Try a buy trip. into a caravan. Yeah, yeah. You can get us into a caravan because we're one trip, and you can make enough money to set, set for life. Okay. And well, everyone knows where Bail Hatar lives. He makes no secret about it. The man <laughs> has large tastes to match his large body. His girth. Mm -hmm. He has good girth, mm -hmm. huh? Oh yeah. Yes. He looks like Baron Harkonnen, really, just without the uh, handicap. Yeah. <laughs> so you approach Mr. Hatar then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so everybody knows where his manor house is. How do you need what's, to approach? What's, what's our planned approach here? Because we can't just like walk up and like have no ideas. What? So are we going to ask him if he's looking Actually, for... Actually, you got a good you got a good point. I think the best. Well, one he's to... a merchant, not a noble, so yeah. he's somewhat more approachable than say a guarded palace. Yeah, but you can't just walk into the palace. That you probably could present yourself at the gate. Yeah, but we also yeah. just want to walk up and act like we're looking for a job. That's that may raise some suspicion if we go through a third party saying we're looking for a job. And since we have a body of men, caravan work and bodyguard work is kind of what we're looking for. That and he said, and the, the letter yeah. said that he is looking for help. So basically, I'm put it out that you're looking and just be general and hope he bites and see if he bites. Yeah, I think. And if that doesn't be... work, then approach the gate. Make a fate roll. Can somebody else do that? Everybody because... in the party. That's, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a group. My fate. This is an. Ex two. Hold on, before everybody starts rolling. Mm -hmm. This is an extended test. I need everybody to roll their fate. Everybody needs to score at least two points of DOS. That means you need at least a heroic. I'm just going to roll my d20 and my d6 in the event I roll a 20. Is that cool? In other words. If I don't roll a 19 or a 20, then this just doesn't count. But if I do happen to roll a 19 or 20, I'll yes, roll okay, again. I you know it. what I mean? Yeah, you know, I, that's actually not a bad idea. Just you saves time. I only got a success Five. on the first one. So you got a one? Mine's not even a partial. Well, my fate is two. Nope. I rolled an 18. I have to use the bathroom. Excuse me. Okay. okay with it, uh, my fate is a... I never actually rolled on a fate yet, so this is going to be interesting. Got a barrel at first time around. How many rolls are we at? Just one. Just one. Got heroic. Heroic. Okay. It's Kinara rather than roll, just spends a heroic tip so she gets her two successes. Huh. Why didn't I think of that? Because I didn't want to spend Would you like to do that? Right. I don't want to spend a chip just yet. Well, yeah. That's the chips are there for. You can always use them in place of making an actual roll. Yeah, but it, you have to do that before the roll, right? Normally. But you obviously forgot, so if you like to spend that heroic, I, I will not object. Yeah. Put it in the pot. I got a heroic, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, so that just leaves him. Yeah, wherever he gets done pe peeing. <sighs> Wish he'd roll before he went to use the bathroom. <laughs> well, I'll let it succeed, but I'm going to add a complication is what I'll do. Yeah. Okay. Well, complication sounds normal, considering you're dealing with a merchant with probably more schemes than you can shake a stick at. Mm-hmm. Makes things more interesting. It's such a good girl. Did, did es uh, Escar roll? Escar? Yes, Escar. I, had her, I had her to spend a heroic paycheck. Oh, that's right. That. I'm sorry, I'm a little burnt out. My dog does that for squirrels. Okay. So, where are we at? We're waiting on you. Let's okay. cover at. So, you put it out there, and about a day later, as you guys are going around your normal routine, starting to meet the locals, get set up. About a day later, an uh, innkeeper comes to you while you're walking through the various ends and stuff, it says to you, hey, uh, there's a gentleman that asked me if I saw you guys to take this, he holds up a small clay chip, and present it to the gates of Bail Hattar's manor, and that you would get an audience. Oh. Oh. Thank you. He also got rid of the ride arc reputations from the, from the Coliseum, by the way. Probably. You don't really have a reputation yet, but... Perhaps he remembered you from the Korea. Who knows? Yeah. Except the the clay chip. I don't know. Would it be customary to give the innkeeper like a little bit of coin? For that? Yeah, okay, yeah, so give gratuity. the innkeeper oh, a gratuity there. When you think of the Bronze Age and Iron Age, think of third world countries, and you pretty much got the got it right. Or the mafia. Maybe. Alrighty. So you proceed to the gates of the Manor of Bale Hatar. Mm-hmm. You'd probably best to go in the early evening, because during the day he's going to be busy doing his merchant thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Do you ask around about Hatar before you go, or do you try to scout the property? Give me... I would definitely ask around. Yeah, ask, kind of see maybe what his current ventures are. What his reputation is for employment. Yeah. Okay, so that's either going to be a rumors skill, or if you don't have rumors, I'll just default to streetwise with a neg two. Mm, neg two. Fun. Mm, streetwise is... Streetwise defaults... Uh, streetwise is linked to your intelligence for this one. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was looking Thank you for anticipating my question. I leave the bar the barbering nah. more civilized folk. Okay. You ain't gonna let me do it, huh? No, yeah. I was just looking at. Mm, well, I rolled a. You got a heroic, so it's not bad. Did better than me. I got nothing. Even though I don't have don't know much about the local area, at least I got a heroic. Which means at least I'm asking the right questions. <laughs> so you have a heroic. You have not a. You have not a. Mm. With your heroic. Freja over here is that Bail Hatar has an appetite for distilled black lotus wine. You take the black lotus, you distill it down, and then you kind of like weaken it a little bit so it's not as strong. Mm -hmm. He has a penchant for that. I'm going to have to ask Vinara about that. Also, because. has a penchant for, well, anybody he can get into bed. He's very sensual. Mm. He doesn't particularly care if they're men or women. Okay. Lately, he's been hanging around another merchant by the name of Joshua Shing. Joshua Shing, a Kushite, is well known for being that guy that has his finger on the pulse, whatever the popular trend is. If the nobles are about to get into silk, he's the guy that knows about it. If they're about to get into a certain kind of tea, he's the guy that knows about it. No one's actually quite sure what Jossa actually does other than socialize. That's what he he may be a professional socializer. That's probably what he does. It's called a courtier. Yeah. Okay. That's what they do. But <laughs> Joshua is rich. Rich, rich, even by merchant standards. At least that's the appearance. That's what everybody says. Mm -hmm. Bale is a spice merchant. He's best known for being one of the guys who has his control on coffee, the one being Jadul Rajam. Uh, Bale is known for occasionally being a little cruel. Not disastrously so, but if you piss him off, he's petty enough to want to ruin you. So if you're going to work for him, don't fail. Stay on his good mm -hmm. side. I mean, yeah. we kind of witnessed that in the gladiatorial ring with yeah. the poisoning of the guy, so, yeah. And he's originally a Shemite. Hmm. Well, that explains a lot about the whole temper thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've known some Arabs in my life, yes. Can I get my foot back? <laughs> and they're very, very touchy. So, you present yourselves to the gates. Yes, uh, with, black, with uh, by the way, I'll have to ask Iskar about the Black Lotus wine, because for Frasia, that will be, Frasia, that would be, over, no clue what that is. She will say it's a hallucinogenic alcohol if you drink too much, but it can kill you. Good to know. Mm. So this guy gets petty and comes after us, we'll just make sure he gets a bottle of it that's a little stronger than usual. <laughs> there we go. Don't cross her. <laughs> so the gates of Bale Hatar to learn. <laughs> the gates of Bale Hatar Manor are brick with bronze statues of Shemite gods all around them, which is unusual to be that openly that openly Zamora. brazen in you know the middle of Zamora. in the middle of Zamora. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the the Shemite gods are so cross worshipped that not a lot of people really say much about it. The Shemites, according to the guide, have a very interesting religion that their bronze statues are also the altar that they sacrifice their gods, sacrifice to their gods to. So when you see these statues, they being up because of what are in the temples, it looks like this brass thing, and in the middle, where the belly would be, it's hollow. That's where you put your fire, and then over the hollow, there's a grate where you put it as you're sacrificing as a burnt offering. And the smoke kind of weeps up through the statue up to heaven. Kind of disturbing to see a human representation without a middle. That's kind of what it looks like. Hmm. Outside his uh, compound, there are a pair of guards. They are local Zamorans. They see you all approaching. And one of them, a man in his 40s, gives the women an appraising look. The other one's just kind of like nervous. It must be like his first day. He's trying to make a good impression with the boss. Who knows? <laughs> the other guy's like, what do you all want? We're here to see Bail Hattar. Oh, another one. Hands the chip back to you. Take him to the escort room. Yes, sir, says the younger guy. Follow me, please. Balls haven't dropped yet, huh? 
He proceeds to take you. It's a great thing about speaking a language nobody else understands. <laughs> he takes you into the courtyard. The courtyard is a very small courtyard. Hatara prefers to be inside rather than outside. You've got maybe 20 feet of like open, That's open bird, and then you have the wall. Shit. Yeah, most of his property is actually his manor house. Fuck me. Okay. Leading people to believe that he's hiding illicit practices inside his manor house. Which is probably not unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Once you're inside the manor, it is as opulent as you would expect. The walls are beautifully washed with paint. There are paintings everywhere. There are carpets. Uh, most of the place is lit by either candles or a lamplight. His servants all wear a similar livery. Most of his servants are native Zamorans. The women are dressed in particular to be provocative. Mm. But uh, as you walk through the palace, you come across... I should say the palace, the manor. As you walk through the manor, you come across one room, which is filled from the bottom of the room to the top in various wines, all in their individual bottle or their cask. Oh, my. All right? And in the center, there's a table with some chairs and some cushions, which is apparently his wine tasting room. He happens to be in this room at the time, reclining on a... Couch, one hand up in his head. Josh is shaking over here. The two of them deep in talk. And not again to make this seem like that this is a game centered on this topic, but the Hyborian Age is noted for its sensuousness and its licentiousness. As Bale is, as Bale is talking to Joshua, like the two men are like this, head to head, right, reclining on couches. You see a shadow moving from behind the table like this, up and down. As one of Bale's servants is serving him in a different manner, if you catch my draft. I got the point. Uh. <laughs> okay. Is he helmet? Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Baseball reference. Good job. Now I am never going to be able to watch that movie again. <laughs> Gives good helmet. Bale looks up, sees you, goes, Oh, hello. Please, come in, come in. Takes a drag off the water hookah. I take it you're here about my employment offer. Why, yes. Uh, we heard that you were looking for someone, uh, folks that would like us to offer services. Sorry, he would have said that a lot smoother than a player did. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I am looking for discreet and able gentlemen and ladies Remember the D to word. assist me in the ruination of a man that richly deserves it. Oh, and who might this be? Well, the GM pulls out his adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you asked a question he wasn't prepared for. <laughs> well, I gotta find out who exactly we're supposed to be uh, fucking over here. I wish for two. Oh, girl, to Fred. Bridge. Bridge went. Yeah, Fred. Decadent degenerates. Seeing who it is, it looks like fun. <laughs> I'll never understand. So I'm guys. sure you remember Amaro Varm. Oh, yes. Well, when his estate broke up, the nobles of the city all began pecking over what they could buy. And most of them had the sense to buy the things that he had blackmailed them out of so that no one realized he had blackmailed them out of them. However, in particular offense to me, a controlling interest in the gladiatorial arena is still contested. And it would go better for me if I had former people of that arena that worked there and fought there upon my side and in my own stables as servants. So I tried to buy them. Only to discover that their contracts had already been purchased by a gentleman. Where do you put it? A Zamoran gentleman by the name of T.C. Varro. T.C. refuses to sell me these gladiators even though I was going to offer three times their normal price. My intentions are to take over the arena and turn it into something respectable. Gladiatorial games are a great benefit to society. The Aquilonians and the Nemedians make them work very well, as well do the people in Kachai. But unlike what we were doing here, there are rules, there are classes, there are no matches where you put someone who's completely unskilled up against a champion just to make the champion look better. Mm. I want to bring some structure back to the games. 
done correctly, it's actually an acceptable trade for people who have no other, no other useful skill and can help them feed their families. But I cannot do that if TC has these gladiators. TC's money comes from the rare wines and foodstuffs that he likes to sell. That's how the two of us met. Should something unfortunate happen to his wine, souring it, and to his foodstuffs, spoiling them, he has so mismanaged his affairs that he could not even deal with one market weekend where he could not make a profit. He would be forced to sell the thing that was the most expensive. He'll be forced to look to sell those gladiators. And as I am the highest bidder, they'll probably come to me. Ah, I see. So what I need, a crew of enterprising young rascals such as... <gasps> oh, thank you, dear. You may go. Yes, he had the whole conversation while that was going on. <laughs> kind of figured, because he, he never said he stopped. <laughs> so. the, the girl gets up, wipes her lips, and goes about her duties. So, where were we? Oh, yes. So, if an enterprising young group of lads such as yourself and ladies were to make that misfortune occur, they would be richly rewarded. I see. Ask the question. What? How richly? <laughs> Just a curiosity break. Would a Sumerian consider this guy a slaver? Everybody's a slaver. But I thought that Every, everywhere you've been are particularly offended by that. Everywhere you've been in this world, you've seen slavery. Right. But what I'm getting at is would a Sumerian take part in it and feel morally corrupt because of it? It's up to you. Okay. Connor doesn't seem to have any problems with it during the adventures that he goes on, according to Howard. Okay. I was just curious about that. I mean, it's not that it's not that he doesn't take advantage of the idea of fucking over slavers when he gets the opportunity, but he also doesn't go out of his way to end the practice either. Got it. Okay. Right. Because he's only one person, and there's no point in arranging a crusade you can't win. He understands that in certain situations, you yeah. just plus you can remember this is a society where even poor people often have a house slave, so you have to take on pretty much the entire freaking population. Plus, our gladiators mm -hmm. seem to like like what they do, right, for the most part. So. Depending on how the culture does its gladiatorial setup, mm -hmm. it can be a voluntary thing you can sell yourself into. Okay. All right. These are all people that actually have been born into slavery and been forced to, glad to be gladiators. They have no choice. But from, but from what Hattar just said, he basically wants to arrange that they actually have a life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the early days of the Roman Empire, yes, all gladiators were slaves. But after the Spartacus Rebellion, they quickly realized that locking somebody into slavery with no way out, that basically, but death, was pretty much giving them giving them no choice but to rebel. I was like, what's the difference? I was looking for an opportunity to role play because I remember yeah. we were talking right. about this. So what he's doing is what the Roman Empire did later on, which is basically you sign a contract, you serve your time in the ring, you survive, you're free. Not to mention the fact that like today's athletes, you've got endorsements and all kinds of good stuff, so you often retired pretty well off. <laughs> so it's definitely kind of what Amaro was doing, though. Yeah. Or to you. Actually, to be perfectly yeah. honest, if he was running the ring like that, Frasian Frasian would actually have been perfectly happy to be a gladiator for a while because that would be good money for her. Yeah, if I, was, good at it. I was wondering about that. So, hmm, what do okay. y'all do? Cool. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. If he's honest about this, yeah. So I would say that for this service, so long as it goes off without it being detected, because I have my hand in it, and yeah, that's tricky, it'd be worth a silver bar. Is there any possibility of haggling him up? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. You gotta understand, he's low. If he's any kind of merchant, he's low balling. Roll your intuition and barter to see if he might be approachable to go up. If he's any kind of merchant. He's, he's low, low balling. balling. I don't think so, but yeah, I'm gonna low. Intuition. I'll haggle. Intuition and barter. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, baby. Yeah, no. <laughs> Roll the one. How about me? Which I would imagine. Nice. For us. Yeah. Sumerian probably is not a great barterer. I got a heroic oh. success. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Again, this is actually, a, she's from a Viking style culture. This is merchant business. <laughs> this is money making business. <laughs> I want to try and get him up to about maybe, I'm going to highball him at, at four, four silver bars and see if we can't hackle to something in the middle. So you approach, approach him with mm -hmm. what? Roll, Four silver bars. Roll play it. Four silver bars. 
<laughs> uh, remember how Apparently, you think you're pirates. Uh, remember no. what you're getting out of this. You're getting a a long-term, very wealthy investment. One I may actually want to join you up on. After all, remember what I did in there. True, but you need to remember you're not the only people that I've approached. Also true. However, we are a deniable asset. We have no connection to you whatsoever beyond coming in today. So will the others. And we have a connection to the ring. One silver bar unless you wish to give me something else. His eyes fall upon his Carnara. Uh, yeah. No. No. Bali steps in front of his Carnara. <gasps> no. Bail looks at you confused. Joshua lets out a short laugh and whispers something in Bail's ear. Oh. Matter of fact, Frazier's looking very mean. Apparently you thought I meant things I did not mean. Let me be more clear. I saw the lady dance once. If she were to say perform at one of my parties. I would consider that worth another silver bar. As long as it's only a dance. Otherwise, parts will be ripped off. What say we ask this Canaro what she thinks? She enjoys dancing. I'm not really going to think about it. I'm not even, uh, she enjoys the dancing. It's not the problem for her. Well, will turn it's the and other ask activity is that Canara, it's like, would you be do. comfortable dancing for these men if you... For a silver bar, I'd fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean about this girl? She's very assertive in some She's places and all. Spoken like a true Zamor. <laughs> in others, I can't get my, my I can't get my purchase. She's still figuring it out now. too. Yeah, it's like being a teenager. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, as long as it's as long as it's strictly dancing, which she enjoys doing anyway. That was aggressive language she just used. Yeah, as long as yeah, she enjoys dancing. So, oh, she, said, silver bar, she also said, I, I, without you, even you a don't realize, beat, I fucking you got to realize what a silver bar is worth. So, two silver bars, then. Two silver bars is But good. it must go undetected. Eight. The way I see it, there are three objectives in this little raid. The first, obviously, I need you to. Ah, damn it. Yes, Search out the location of his food and wines, sour the wine, spoil the food. It must be done with. Out being detected, and you must not kill anyone, non lethal force only. Mm. <laughs> Second, to prevent him from being able to sell his livestock to cover his debts, you need to set the livestock free and make sure he has enough time to flee and scatter so that his meager resources of men against these leverage resources badly. The livestock will vanish amongst the city and the countryside, and he'll spend too much trying to recover it for it to actually be worth much at market. We got mm. how many trained Terranians who know livestock well, historically, you know, culturally? <laughs> that will be their mission. And finally, <laughs> where'd it go? As a matter of fact, we may get a free meal out of that one. To make the animal escape look like an accident or a distraction, so that he will not pay any attention to checking his foodstuffs and wines, you're going to need to go after his cash box. To make it look like this is a robbery. Success at actually robbing the cash box isn't required. In fact, you can actually put evidence down there that you failed, like, you know, broken lockpicks and the like. What happens if we actually get the cash box? Enjoy yourselves. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah? Okay. Because you don't understand how much lockpicks cost. <laughs> There have to be custom made even today, and they're worth thousands of dollars a set. So I shall have your bar waiting for you in return, and you are successful. Excellent. And the other bar will be given to her after I have the party and celebrate my acquisition of the ring. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. That sounds fair. That damn good one it is. All right. Well, are you from so Benheim or Asgard? Benheim. Huh? I thought she was Northern Northerners, good bargainers. Hey, two, two bars is actually damn good money. And it was actually what I was aiming for. Ah. <laughs> so I guess we go ahead and make our farewells and, also and remember, head out. And we, remember, okay. cash box is all ours if we can keep it. So, you leave Bail Hattar in Joshua Singh's presence. As you're leaving, the indolent fops that they are proceed to speaking closer, and you're pretty sure they start kissing, but you're not quite sure because they're a little discreet about that. Eh. But as you leave, you hear the sounds of other pleasures being indulged in. Eh. Civilized degenerates. <laughs> you Sumerians are so damn prudish. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs>
Vikings are a little. But more actually, I was realizing just how conservative they are relative. Yeah, to they're the very British. <laughs> yeah, Conan's <laughs> always making derogatory remarks about historic. Yes. I don't know about the Vanerheim and the other Viking types he has in his setting, but I knew his. I know historically, Vikings were anything but brutish about such things. I mean, apparently. Well, we are talking about the fictional Sumerians here. I mean, basically, as long as you produced a hair and a spare, they didn't care what you did in your spare time. <laughs> I mean, Conan really deems everybody a degenerate that he comes across, and he and he says it out loud. Like I said, I'm actually calling. I'm going to I'm going to call Kale Alright, You're a prude. Prude. Yeah. So he is a prude. You right? have your target, mm -hmm. T. C. Varro. Ah. You have now got to go do all the legwork, everything else on your own, to make it truly look like it was independent. That is actually hey. not going to be that hard. For one, is when is the next big market day? So how much time we actually have here? Probably about five days. Actually, that's plenty because all we got to really do is make it around that we didn't get hired. We're gonna play for about another half hour. Spread around very and subtly. Don't make a big deal out of it, but basically start putting out feelers for other jobs so we make it clear that we haven't been hired by this guy that didn't work. Okay, we've been passed over. Start looking for other jobs. Okay, mm -hmm. and be picky about them. Don't turn them down outright, but be picky about them. And so it still looks like. So it looks like we're still looking for employment. Mm. All right. Then we, yes, we do need to start casing these places. That's not too hard. All we need to do is hand out a few brass coins to a few street urchins, and we'll get a pretty good idea with layout of his various locations. Mm. Okay. And how would you go about salarying wine? I have no idea. We probably need to employ an alchemist. Or you just... Oh, hey, I have the alchemy skill. Then you might know. Give me an intelligence and alchemy roll. I was about to say, actually, it's actually fairly easy. Yeah, I think she knows. <laughs> see how well I know. <laughs> That's either uh, a heroic or higher. A heroic. With your heroic alchemy success, you know there's several agents you can use to ruin wine and food. You just have to go buy them in the market. Yeah, food's a little harder. Wine is actually fairly easy. Okay. So I'll it's a probably ferment, have and wine is a fermenting. Little, so you just have to, to go to, break the fermenting process. Well, I don't know. Should I be vinegar. obvious about? I probably wouldn't want to be too obvious about what I'm buying in case it might come back. And again, use third parties. Act like you're buying for us in our particular. True. Now the components for souring the food and wine are would they be things that could possibly be used for other things? Of course they are. All chemicals can be used for all kinds of things. It's very rare you have a chemical and use for one thing. Yeah. Okay, so maybe have it where there's maybe a few like buy those but buy some additional things that like if I put those things together it would make something different. Yeah. So do that. So you arrange your purchases so that it's yeah. basically kind of close what it is you're trying to do with what you're buying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds a good precaution. Food is a little harder to sour, but not impossible either. The trick with the food, however, is, is indeed making it look like an accident. So that's where the street interaction is kind of, I guess we'd have to see how they're stored. Yeah, because they may there's... be a simple way of just damaging the building to make it look mm -hmm. like an accident that way and have the weather mm -hmm. do the job for us or have the local wildlife do the job for us or whatever. Yeah. You know, and without having to use alchemy, which would be a little more traceable. The wine, on the other hand, you kind of have to do something to the cask. <laughs> uh, now, the paddocks, eh. Is that where he, 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 he implied that he kept his, that the, our target kept his cash box where the animals are kept, right? No, he said you have to search out where the cash box is. He just tells you basically it's all one site. This is where we get to our recon thing. Mm -hmm. As far as you know, this is all at one site. Okay. This Kanara is going to spin a chip. I was going to say I was going to spin a chip. Try to say, cash why don't we start asking around and see if he's got any? If uh, T C Varro has any servants in the town that cover the market, and chat them up. Maybe I could. Get him drunk. Seduce one and get him to talk, or her. Well, as long as you don't have to sleep with him. Well, that's what it takes. She might. See, because the up. problem with Escanara doing this is she, she is unfortunately very memorable. Yeah, that's true. So maybe Volley should be the one seducing him. That only works if they're women or a certain kind of man. <laughs> and as far as me being memorable, I can wear a veil. True. True. You do see lots of more women wearing veils. Okay, like just, but just make sure you get in a situation where you don't have to take your veil off and don't have to spread your legs. 
because either way, you're too memorable. I can vouch for that. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> she was gonna make the joke, but since you interrupted, it kind of makes her color. So she changed her comment to, "Well, maybe one day you'll find out how memorable I can be." And she walks over to the market, start going through the market, start fishing for information. <laughs> As I walk into something. <laughs> laughing at you. Can I interrupt as a player? Yeah. What's the word again for real world intrusion on the game? You were saying it when we were playing uh, Red Letter or Red Ink. I don't remember. Okay. Um, okay, so let's Durle see. Mock. Is it Moke or Mock? I believe it's pronounced Mock. Dur Durle Mock. I wrote this down. Spider Priest of Xanth hires the group to eradicate Aaron June's Necromancers and sorcerers, because he's trying to clean it up. To that end, we established our residence, our base of operations. Now we're seeking, getting paid by him, but also under the pretense of seeking out, starting our business and doing other things, we're hiring ourselves out to other people, all of which is to ferret out said sorcerers and. From Mox and the. Mock wants us to establish a reputation as being trusted good agents. Mm -hmm. So the demonologists and the necromancers might hire us, and then we can follow that information back to him. Yeah, yeah. so right now we're establishing So we're establishing by doing work for this guy. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be good word of mouth to us. Yeah, we can pull it off for Bail Hattar. He's okay. definitely going to be letting people know. And yeah. eventually some of these guys will come to us and we'll know, okay, well, this is on, this is one of our targets. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we're really, really like, we could kill a few. Okay. Mm. Boy, they must be really cautious. Well, yeah, dude. I mean, They're even if, even if it was perfectly know. legal to do a lot of that shit, you're still talking about a bunch of very paranoid SOB sociopaths. I would I, imagine the guy who just hired us probably knows quite a few of them. But if he's even aware they're part of the circle, mm -hmm. it could be that deep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So again, you have this nameless cabal, as Mock called them, of sorcerers and necromancers in origin that he's trying. He feels are trying to corrupt the country. They are masquerading as other nobles, or they are other nobles. Mm -hmm. He's not sure who they are. The reason why he knows the nobles are involved is because he caught one in the act. The one that's controlling Yarapol. So he's going with this plan of putting his agents out there and he can get the agents to be used to run these people's errands, get their get their items they need for their rituals. He can, by what you've done, put together who's hiring who for what. It's also reasonable to assume we're not the only party of thieves doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he can start getting a better picture of who might be one of these sorcerers. Ironically, it's what Cardinal Rishi used That's did. what Mock's goal is. Hatar just wants to ruin this other rival merchant. Right, I got that. Yeah. And so by doing this job for Hatar, we begin to build our reputation, which may eventually lead to Mock's success. Ironically, this is what Rishi's agents, Rochefort and Milady, were doing in the Musketeers, ironically, to expose the Queen as a traitor. So it's a very similar idea. You just go out there, pull a few jobs, pull a few things. So this cabal could be so secretive and so good at what they're doing that even the guy that just hired us might not even really know about them. Correct. And likely doesn't because okay. he's a foreigner. Interesting. Okay. Got it. I got a better handle on it. Okay. No mm -hmm. problem. So she goes looking for some of T.C. Varro's... Um, yeah, T.C. Varro, that's right. T.C. Varro's uh, servants. What are the rest of you doing? I'll go with her. Keep an eye on her. And also look around and t talk myself. Okay. I'm going to fill in our uh, our bunch of uh, Terranians about this because I'm thinking of using them for the paddock. Try and find out how much uh, experience okay. they have of herding. Paraj and Barchu go, well, we need to actually scout the property then. We'll go do that and come back with a map. Be very subtle about this. We cannot have anything traced to us. We're for Terranian riffraff. You have a good point. They do tend to ignore us a lot, don't they? So how much uh, how much experience do you have of herding? Because it's not really our thing. We usually just That's kill what? animals. Herding. He looks at you like you fell off a horse. Well, I don't actually fall off horses, but we've never actually herded animals in my homeland. They have herds, man. They have cattle and other things like that. Yeah, but not on not like they do. We don't do it on. Yeah, they don't do it on horseback. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't do it like The training goes, we can manipulate the animals. That won't be an issue. Okay, we just need but to, we need to get a look at the terrain. So yeah. Barchu and I will go do that while my other three men stay back at the building and keep it secured. Good. Okay, 
and I'm going to go and look on the outside of the city to find out just how far we may have to scare these fuckers until they hit the woods and the hills country and really disappear. Oh, and also see where we can possibly split off with you and get some free meat. Well, I imagine between the city wall and where you actually have wilderness, you probably have about 8 to 10 miles at various points hmm. of distance between the wood line slash wilderness line and the city and its outlying fields. So maybe about maybe 10 minutes of hard riding. Mm, yeah, 10 to 15 minutes, somewhere around there. That's not, that's not too bad. As long as, as long as the guards aren't right on our ass, it should be, should be easy. Hmm. The trick is going to be getting the, the cattle or the sheep or whatever we end up chasing off a couple of them off so we can get some free meat. Oh, come on, dude. If we can get a good bull, that'll feed all nine of us for a month. <laughs> so I know what he's doing. What are you doing? Whatever these two tell me to do. I like the hired muscle. Don't kill anyone. <laughs> no, seriously. You need to figure out the security. Of at least the winery and, and the uh, food storage once you find out where that is. We can't really do that until we see the site. Yeah, so I'm saying well, that's, that's going to be your job. Recon? Right? Basically, yeah, because you're a Sumerian and uh, you kind of do stick out, so we can't okay. use you for the True eyes and perception trace spot one of the servants. I'm noticing True eyes and perception trace stop. Just try to spot one of the servants. She did. I do too because of my red hair. And that is bad for a woman. And because I'm a woman, I kind of go halfway under the radar even with my looks. Yeah, 25. Nice. I'm noticing that in most of the Howard stories, they pick out Sumerians like that. Well, they mostly pick about Connick because of his height. Yeah, they're well, all. He's very tall things. compared to everybody else. Yeah, you're, you're, Sumerians are just big. Success. One of his friends okay. at Thunderlander is also so. Like Escanar is right? over there talking to some women. You're looking around for servants, and since we know we're looking for TCRO with a couple of discreet questions, you discover what delivery of his servants looks like. You spot one of them actually buying what looks like salt and other foodstuffs for the manor while he's in the marketplace. He's currently oh. haggling with a vendor. They're by a cart full of the salt, and the guy's talking to the guy with a like, little, not only like a notepad, but kind of like a uh, slate, if you will. Mm -hmm. And he's arguing with the guy about this list that he has and how much the salt should be, and you hear over and say, You highway robber! Three silver coins for a bag of salt? It was only two and a half last week! What's wrong with you? How dare you try to gouge it? They're participating in haggle. Of course. What do you do? Well, I'm going to let them haggle because this is practically a religious experience for Zamorans. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> you do not interrupt the haggle as it's going on. <laughs> so, but wait for him to, like, finish haggling and, like, move on and then try to approach him then. Okay. So the two of them argue back and forth for another five minutes. Do you have counseling? No. Okay, so this game's version of psychology. Give me a straight intuition roll on the two men. Crap, now I gotta oh. Damn! Yeah. Ouch. Crap, now I gotta pee. <laughs> Sorry, man. Hey, it's my first time peeing today. I'm happy. <laughs> pee pee. I got a dramatic. With the dramatic, you determine that the seller is being honest. The guy he's arguing with is being dishonest, trying to lowball him for the salt. Ah, okay. And that it's born not necessarily out of a need to preserve their money, but just have a simple kind of pettiness the man might possess. Hmm. So if he's not entirely. If he's not entirely happy with his employment, he might be easy to get information out of. Correct. Okay. So, like I said, I'll let them finish haggling. Because interrupting might be problematic. Merchant finally finishes talking to the uh, servant who's buying the salt and says, Well, if that's how you feel about it, this much for the lot and I'll throw in the cart too. Gets it and walks off and doesn't help the guy hitch up the cart, or load it, or anything else like that. Then I almost certainly offer my services in this regard. <laughs> Can't believe you've helped these days. Lifts up the salt, and the salt is in these packets of bags are like 50 pounds each, right? Okay, pretty heavy. <clears throat> uh, Make an old servant have to do his master's will. 
Good sir, I see that uh, there's a lot here to load up on your Let me help you with this. This is certainly not something that he should have left you to do. This counts as being deceptive. <laughs> Am I rolling a speech? Mm -hmm. Speech charisma, and you can add your deception bonus. These pipes are clean! <laughs> Sorry. And how. <laughs> I am now a cabin man. <laughs> <laughs> I got a legendary. Cool. cool. <laughs> I'm a smooth motherfucker. The servant's quite impressed with you and becomes quite talkative since you have a legendary. What what questions are you trying to get out of him? Um. Let's see. Well, find out what he actually does at the manor. Okay. So, um, that's just like, this is a, quite a lot of uh, food steps you're getting here. Are you, do you work as like the steward or something at the manor? Or just one of the other servants for the kitchen or something? Well, right now I've been the head chef for the past week because he keeps firing everybody else and not dealing with anyone else. And now I'm stuck with his ever-changing tastes. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, that does sound quite awful. Having to deal with that? It's quite difficult, yes. Why ever-changing taste? Is it food? He keeps chain, changing his, uh, what he wants to eat all the time? Pretty much. Last month it was all this fare from Dendia because of some merchant that moved into town and captured everyone's imagination. And This week it's all this Preserved meat and stuff, like he's trying to court Terranians or Hycranians or who knows who what. Ah. Uh oh. Preserved. Which probably will make it hard to spoil. No, not that. You're not telling me what questions you're actually trying to get out of him. Like, you want what information specifically to send and what so, to answer for you? Um, kind of, well, he's in the kitchens. So, get an idea of maybe. See. Want me to help you out? Like, yeah, that would be nice because I'm tired and my brain's gone down. <laughs> That's okay, I feel the same way as you know, we the two of us, maybe we can come up with something rationally you know, logical here. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Ask him uh, if he's actually, you know, who is actually showing up for his dinners. Because oh, if, he's, yeah. if he's trying to court Hercanians or Terranians, we may end up having to deal with some people, you know, at the paddocks we may not want to deal with. And, uh, mm. you know, also ask him, you know, why doesn't he use his own food since he's a food importer? Why doesn't he use his own stocks and his own uh, chain, you know, chain of supply for stuff? Mm, that's a good point. So you discover that Tito T.C. Varro, although he is pretty much a grocer and livestock curator for his, food, mm. for his money, he doesn't actually eat much finery of his own. He has a fine feast to try to impress guests, but he himself lives very simply and eats very simply. Hmm. The chefs that he's been firing, he's been firing because he told them to do this complicated thing, not understanding how complicated it was, and when they couldn't do it, it made him look bad. It's part of what his mismanagement has been about. He's been spending mm -hmm. so much trying to impress people, mm -hmm. and not giving him any benefit. Now he's a little in the red. Is he new money? No. Okay, he's old money. Because that also will help. You know, if he's new money then his palace or his manor house will be much bigger than it really needs to be. And finding the cash box will be that much harder. If he's old money, he's using a family estate, which would probably be a fairly reasonable size. Also, family money tends to be stored in a central location rather than scattered various in his various enterprises. If he's in the red, however, there may not be a whole lot in the cash box. We never know. Maybe a family heirloom or two that he hasn't parted with yet. You never know. And now, the last thing the legendary is you're here, and now he's adamant that by the time that she arrives, we have to have everything just so. He's trying to make major so so he can remodel the manor, have over the best artists, the, the best entertainment, the best wine. But I don't think she's going to show. The queen. Oh. And you find out that... You're right, the she, the queen of Zamora in this continuity, likes to tour the country for her mm. husband, keep an eye on things. And she is eventually scheduled to arrive near our engine. And he's trying to draw her in as yeah. advertisement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Ah, 
Yes, because who wouldn't want to buy their fine food and wine from the man who entertained the queen? Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, advertisement and PR is as old as mankind. We just don't have enough people <laughs> to make it work. Holy oh. shit, do we have so a way in now. you're looking for maybe some assistance? Because I might know some people. I do, but is, he is so... He's so fanatical about betting everybody, it takes forever to hire anybody. Uh. On the other hand, an extremely charismatic and very, very hot dancer, hired for entertainment purposes. <gasps> There's that. So, this vetting process, exactly how difficult could it be? He pulls all the new recruits in for an hour interview, and if anything goes wrong, anything the slightest, he doesn't hire them. Huh. Slave, freeman, or not, it's made my life hell. Huh, I, I imagine. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I can imagine that. That's That's got to suck. Yeah. Well, I'll see what I can do as far as getting you some assistance, because this, my friend, just sounds just awful. Oh, well, thank it you, friend. My name is... Jordan Naka, and I am the head chef. If you need anything, have someone come to the manor and ask for me, and I'll be happy to introduce you to him. Jordan J O R N I. Mm -hmm. Naka. Jordan J O R N I. J O R N I. Naka. N A. Probably C H A would be the best way to uh, transliterate that. Okay. okay. So he's head. Wait, head chef? Yep. Or. Okay, and actually, guys, I think that might be a good place to leave it. Yeah, because I'm going to have to do some serious thinking. That might be a, not a bad idea on how to get inside okay. and look for the box. So, wrapping up the evening, so your Turanian members are going to come back with the map of the place. Mm -hmm. You now know you've got a couple of different ways to get in, and you know he's desperately spending money entertaining. He probably is desperate for money. We're going to leave it there. Write down what chips you have. It will let you carry them over to the next session. Okay.